I give all glory to God. This is not a boastful thing, what I'm going to tell you. We're all friends here. I was in church for like maybe six months, and I remember um, I remember my mom at the time, she wasn't, um, she didn't have the experience that, you know, I had or what we've experienced tonight. And um, I remember she went to church for the first time because she heard that I joined a cult. <laughs> it was next door, and she came there to pull me out. She wanted to pull me out. She said, I'm not going to let my son go over here because I, I started coming home. I wouldn't smell like weed no more. I wasn't drunk no more. I came with the Bible, had a shirt and tie on. She says, Freddie, that is wrong of you to use the things of God to, to make it appear that you're not doing drugs. What are you doing now? <laughs> I said, I'm not doing drugs no more, Mom. Don't lie to me. Looking in my eyes. She came to church to pull me out, Brother Medina. She sat in the back row, and I remember I was in the front row. Hallelujah. Oh, you know how we do it. When the Spirit of the Lord moves on my heart, I will dance like David danced. Woo. I looked back, and I saw my mom, and I was like, my mom is here. And she was like this. <laughs> what is going on in this church? But at the end of that altar call, my mom was on her knees, praying in a heavenly language, speaking in tongues. God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now she's a Sunday school teacher in the church that we're starting in Maricopa. My first year living for God, the Lord had used me to reach 17 people in my immediate, my immediate family that were baptized in Jesus' name and all received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, God can use anybody. I was an atheist. I was a drug addict. I was hanging out in mosh pits. I was what they call a juggalo. I ran with the insane clown posse. And um, we used to be in mosh pits where they throw fago on us. Fago soda, for those of you that don't know. I had my face painted like a wicked clown, had my tongue pierced, had ears pierced, had my nose pierced. I had tattoos all over me. I was looking to do this. I was looking to shave my head with the razor blade and go to the doctor and get surgery to get some bolts drilled into my skull so that I can get these horns and screw them into my head and tighten them up that I would have real devil horns. That's what I was looking into. I was even saving money up for it. But when the Lord got a hold of me, there was a change. And when God changed my life, I realized he's not just after me. But whenever I would drive to work, I would see people on the freeway. And I would look at these people next to me. And I'd begin to cry tears. And I'd see the man next to me driving his car going to work. And there are all the thousands of people on the freeway. And I'd just lift my hand towards them all and start praying in the Holy Ghost. And praying for them and crying out to God. That's not my nat. That's not your human desire to do. But when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, he gives you his heart. He gives you his desire. He gives you his burden. He gives you what he wants. Some of you, you used to look at people, and if they look at you wrong, you're like, what you looking at? And you look back again, you see them, and you're like, what? Well, you want some? But when you get Jesus on the inside... Even your enemy can't budge you. A tear will fall down your face because the love of God is shining towards him. And he's looking at you with a fist. But you're coming to him with a hug. What can do that to a man but the Holy Ghost? What can do that to a man but the love of God? God has done it for me and he's done it for you. My God, my God, my God. Tonight, God has come to those also that have lost their passion. You got the Holy Ghost. You pray, you pray through, you speak in tongues. But there's a passion for reaching the lost that has been long gone. And I don't mean to say that to step on your toes to make myself an enemy to you or to make you upset with the preacher. I love every one of you. But what's real is real. We just got to throw our cards on the table and say, hey, Brother Freddie, you know, my, my desire has gone. Brother Freddie, what you're saying is true. I don't have joy, and I'm, I'm even doing things that in the natural should give me joy, and I'm still not happy. I took a vacation last week, and I had fun, but when I came back, I just knew it was going to be the same old, same old. You have the ability to impact your world so much if you just understand who you are. We have 
a land where we're looking to build a church. Can I tell you this? God will give us the money for that church as soon as he sees every one of us. Every one of us is serious. Not serious about playing your piano, which if you're doing that, keep doing that. But there's a difference between your talents and gifts from the call of God to win souls. There is a difference. There is a difference. Because I sing with all day with my wife. We play, she plays the piano. I sing with her. That's not winning people to the Lord. It's anointing. It opens the heart for the word. But I have got to go into the field. So this is what I'm asking. Would everybody here give an offering of your heart to say, I will at least give a Bible study sometime this month? Just one. How do you do that? You, you got the whole setup running for you. Look at the new converts in this church. Well, uh, how am I going to hook up a Bible study? Who am I going to ask? Well, I'm scared. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Power, God's ability to do his work, to give that Bible study. Love, to have passion, to care when you normally wouldn't. And a sound mind, to stay sound, to stay sound when the devil says you can't do it. And when the devil comes and says you can't do that, you can't do that. Who, you, who are people going to talk about you? You can't do things for God. Can I expose the devil right now? And I did it last Thursday, I think. One of the devil's tactics to the church is to say, don't do anything for God because if you do, you're going to make yourself to be seen, and everybody's going to look at you and say, you're only doing that to be seen by people. Can I tell you the devil is a liar? You're called to do that work. If you do it, people are going to see you. Stay humble and keep doing it. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Let's rededicate ourselves tonight. If the musicians would come to the instruments, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray. And I feel the enemy fighting us right now. Can you feel that? Can somebody feel that? Oh, Brother Freddie, you preach a good sermon. I'm going home. Oh, yeah, that, that was good. We had church. We had, we're going home. I'm not looking for those of you that are looking to go home. If those of you that are looking to go home, you're more than welcome to go home. We love you. Come back next week. Praise God. But God is looking for those that are choosing to be chosen. How many here are willing to open up your house for a Bible study? How many of you are willing to get your money and buy five little Caesar pizzas and get like five new converts and invite them to your house? Yeah, they still smell like smoke. They just got saved. Yeah, they got a pack of smokes in their pocket. Can you still love them? Yeah, they're still sipping on Jim Bean and Jack Daniels, but can you still talk to them? Or do you wait for them to look like you before you care? Do you wait for them to get converted all the way before now I'll be your brother, now I'll be your sister? God is looking to destroy our concepts of thinking and give us his burden and passion.